Hello, this is Texas BK, and welcome to another installment of Noobstone, where we take a simplified look at how redstone components work to where it's not only easier to build, but to understand these different redstone contraptions, so we can then take the principles and apply them to other builds in our world. Today, we'll be taking a look at simple item sorters. These have been around for a long time and they're extremely useful in lots of different applications. And today we're going to be taking a look at two basic versions of the simple sorter. So let's get started and I'll show you exactly how they work. The first simple item sorter that I want to start with is the original impulse item sorter. It's been around for quite a while and that's, well, simply because it, it works. It's one wide tileable and really easy to build too. Now chances are that if you are building an item sorter, you're putting it into an existing structure. When I do that, I like to make sure that I have the right space for it to fit. If I know where I want to go to have a walkway to access my chests, I start there and then place a double chest on the ground where I want to have access to them. Then I can come in behind it and crouch place a hopper. And this way I know exactly where the rest of the build is going to be in relationship to the output chests. So the next thing that we want to do, now that we know where it's going to be, is come in with the solid block. This can be any solid block as long as it's non-transparent. And come one block to the right of this hopper. That way we have kind of a walkway in between here and gives room for the rest of the components. Then come and place an additional two blocks on top. And then place one right here in front. Then come in and place your redstone comparator on this block, pointing in this direction. Then come around and place some more solid blocks on the ground behind it. And then one up here. And at this time, come in and go ahead and place in your redstone repeater, pointing in this direction so that the output is pointing into that solid block. Once you've done that, come back in and place an additional block on top of it so you have a configuration that looks like this. Then come in and place three redstone dust coming out of the comparator and ending on this last block. Come in and place a redstone torch off of this block right here. And now we're ready to place our hoppers and chests for this system. Now you can place as many rows of chests as you want, but I typically like to put three rows so I can store lots of items. And you have to crouch place in order to place them on top of each other followed up with a hopper into each one, then come here, crouch place, and crouch place so that you have another double chest, one more hopper coming into this double chest, and then we're ready for our top hopper. Now these are all being used to feed into our storage chest, but now we need to have the sorting hopper. And what you want to do is have it place either have it face either into this comparator or away from the comparator. It is very important that the output of this hopper is not pointing to the side or downward. If it is pointing into the hopper below it, it will not work. If it points into the hopper next to it, then it will not work. It must point into something that will not receive an item, like the comparator or a temporary block off on this side. Either way works, but it must be one of those two. Chances are if it's not sorting and just items are feeding through, it's because you placed this hopper wrong. And now, let me give you a quick explanation of how it works. This top hopper is going to be our filtering hopper that will be used to sort out our entire system. In the filtering hopper, we need to place four holder items. These are going to be used to just fill up these four spots on the hopper so that we only have one that's going to be accepting items. The item that you use in these four slots doesn't really matter. It can be anything. But it is important that whatever item you use as a placeholder will never enter this system. For that reason, some people like to take a stack of the item and put them on an anvil and rename them to something like filter. This isn't absolutely necessary. It's just a way to make sure that you don't accidentally have in this case, spruce wood slabs coming through the system and accidentally breaking it. Because if that does happen, it will cause the system to break. And let me show you why. When you take and place any number of a single item into this first slot, what will happen is it begins being pulled out of this hopper into the hopper below it. Now this comparator 
detects how many items are in there. When it reaches a total of 45 items, 41 of the item you're sorting, in this case wheat, and four filter items, it now has an output strength of 2. So you will see that this redstone dust and this redstone dust are lit up, but the third one is not. If you ever get at least one more item out of this hopper, you will then increase the signal strength to 3, at which point this block is powered, this repeater detects the signal and puts a full output to this block, which toggles this redstone torch off. If this redstone torch is on, it locks this hopper, and it will not take any more items out of the hopper above it. If you ever get a 40-second item of the item you're sorting, you will then have this toggled off, which will unlock this hopper and start taking items out of it. Of course, it always pulls from the first slot first, which means that these will never be touched. As long as you don't have additional filter items coming into your system, it will only pull wheat out of this. And any items that come across it will be ignored if it's unless it is wheat. You'll notice that if you come down to the bottom chest, the extra wheat came into it. Let's test it one more time so you can watch it in action. Here you can see I put the items in and our redstone torch is off because we have a redstone signal coming all the way to the third block. And as soon as it reaches 41, the torch went back on and therefore locked this hopper. Hopefully you can see why it's important that this hopper is not pointing down into it. Because this is the hopper that is locked, not this one. If this is to be pointing down, the output would push into this hopper, even though it's locked. And you would end up having all of these items leave this hopper and fill up the one below. But because it's pointing into the comparator, we don't have that problem. And that's all there is to the simple impulse item sorter. Of course, with the introduction of target blocks, we have an alternative way to build this sorter. And because they finally fixed the bug that allow, now allows you to use target blocks as intended in Bedrock Edition, we can use them for our sorting systems. Let me show you how to build it using target blocks. Now the target block version of the sorter is also one wide tileable and works in much the same way as the impulse version. Now in building this system, we start with a solid block here and then place a target block on top of it. We can then place our redstone torch off the end and a solid block on top. Then we come in and place a comparator on top of the solid block and just like we did with our first system, place a hopper pointing into the comparator. Then we come in and place a solid block here, a solid block there, one more solid block there, and then place a transparent block. Usually glass is the best way to go with this, as it will allow our redstone signal to transfer across and then back through the glass. As you'll notice, there are still three pieces of redstone dust, just as there is on the first system. This way, we can still have 46 items being the trigger to unlock our hoppers. The next thing we need to do is place our chests for the hoppers to go into. Crouch place a hopper into it. But here's where it has to be a little different. As you notice, this redstone torch is underneath this hopper. Therefore, we won't be able to place our hopper directly underneath it. So what we will have to do is have all the items fed from this hopper into this double chest. And then if we want to add additional chests underneath it for additional storage, we'll need to come in and place our chest like this and have a hopper feeding into it from underneath this chest into this chest and then we can place our double chest below it like this. And place our additional hopper like that. And this system works exactly the same way as the original system. And as you can see, it takes up one block less in the footprint for the redstone components. 
but it has a quirk in that that this chest right here is inset from the rest and personally from a cosmetic standpoint I don't like how that looks I like having these chests all line up smooth on the front end so a way to make that work is to just come in and remove this part of the chest place an additional hopper pointing into there and then come in and place the second half of the double chest right there this way they line up but if when you do this you notice they take up the exact same footprint from the front of the chest to the back of the redstone workings of the sorter so it really doesn't save any space to help better understand how it works I went ahead and built six tiles of the target block sorter since they both work the same way we could use it to demonstrate how the sorting system works as you'll notice I went and put into the filter hopper 41 items of different types basically what will happen is as items come across each of the filter hoppers they will only take in the items that match the 41 items in the first slot then they will come down and fill in the bottom chest and work its way up to the top chest now if we come around to the back I can show you why this is able to be one wide tileable the maximum output that this comparator will take from the hopper will be a redstone signal of three because you can never exceed 64 items in the first slot and as long as you never put any of the filter items into the system you will never exceed that signal strength of three so if you have a signal strength of three here it will either go one two and then three to the spot down below or it could go one two three and never reach the target block on the one below this second slot or go one two three and never reach even the second spot on the third one and it never goes any further so that means that if this one ever reaches the number to, in order to unlock its hopper it'll never have a signal strength strong enough to cause any of the other ones to unlock as well and this way it will not cause the system to overflow now connecting this to either a mob farm or a wheat farm or a crop farm or any other sort of input system even mainly entering in items to be sorted all you have to do is come and start by placing an overflow chest off the end here just in case you accidentally have an item go in that is not supposed to be sorted or if you end up having something overrun the system now you can use water streams or hoppers to make this work I'm going to use just hoppers to make it easy to demonstrate so we'll first I begin by putting a chain of hoppers starting with this overflow chest and then adding in hopper into each successive one then all you have to do is have your input coming into this first hopper now I'm not going to connect this to an actual farm but you can imagine that this chest is the input for our system let's go ahead and add in some items and watch them be sorted into our item sorter now as you can see the first items have already gone into this chest and they are beginning to filter in the next item and you'll notice none of the other ones have any items in them yet but if we give it a few moments they will eventually all filter through okay it's been just a minute or two so let's go ahead and see as you can tell every single chest has the appropriate item in them and none of them went into our overflow chest now what happens if you put in an incorrect item let's say someone put redstone dust some glass and a target block in there on accident all three of them end up in our overflow chest in addition to that if any of your chests become completely full up through the entire capacity of this slice any excess will also go into the overflow chest now I used hoppers for this demonstration but if you choose to use a water stream to send the items across your filter you could potentially have groupings of items that will exceed the speed of your hoppers and you will eventually get some that end up in your overflow chest personally if you're going to be running something that has a high output you might consider having two slices for each item in order to prevent the eventuality that they will exceed the speed of your hoppers so which one's better the original impulse design or the new version that uses target blocks well to be honest it really depends on your situation from a purely resource standpoint the original one uses less resources as it only needs three redstone dust to make a repeater 
where a target block requires four redstone dust and a hay bale. Also, if you want to have the aesthetic of having the output chests all line up, you will need an additional hopper as well for the new version. Another consideration to take into account is system performance. While I've not played on a multiplayer server, I have heard that sorting systems that use repeaters tend to be a little bit glitchy and can easily be overrun and have items skip their slice and end up in the overflow, especially if there's lots of players online or the server is a little bit laggy. As I've only played on a local machine, the only time I've had an issue like this is when I had my sorting system hooked up to a portal ticking gold farm. There was so much rotten flesh and gold nuggets being produced that it tended to overload and occasionally one or two items would get past my filters and end up in the overflow, even with a second slice for each item. Not many things got past, but a few things did. But to be honest, I'm not sure having a target block on that farm would have mattered anyway. It was just way overpowered and very fast, so trying to keep up was difficult at best. So which one's best? Well, it's totally up to your preference. I recommend trying out the one that you find the most interesting and letting us know in the comment section down below how it worked for you. But that's it, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that it helps you out and you can put this to use somewhere in your world. If it has, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave a comment down below letting us know how you used it. And on that note, I'd like to say thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next one. But until then, this is Texas PK. Be good to each other. Bye.